the time, 50,000 years ago. The place, Canyon Diablo, the Canyon of the Devil, in a desert now called Arizona. Nothing could have been more terrifying. In less than a minute, a detonation as powerful as a hydrogen bomb leveled 300 square kilometers of Savannah. The blast sent a supersonic gust of wind raging across the wilderness, killing every living thing in its path. And when the wind died and the dust cleared, a crater appeared, a crater more than a kilometer wide and nearly 200 meters deep a silent remnant of this cataclysmic event. Thousands of years later, the ancestors of Native Americans migrated to this region and settled on the surrounding plains. The presence of this enormous, bewildering hole in the grassland fired their imaginations. It was a sacred place they were forbidden to visit Tribes told stories of a god falling from the sky, bearing lightning, thunder, and burying himself in the crater. However, it was no god that descended to Earth that day, but a visitor from outer space, a meteor. This metal monster was 50 meters wide and weighed 300,000 tons. Amazingly, most of it vaporized upon impact leaving only small pieces buried deep underground. What was this intruder from the sky, and where did it come from? To find the answers to these questions, we must look deep into the past, before there was an Earth, or a moon, or the sun. Four and a half billion years ago, our solar system formed in a cocoon of gas and dust, at the heart of the cloud was a primeval glowing orb, the newly formed sun. As the eons passed, condensing knots of gas and dust grew imperceptibly into planets and moons. A small amount of gas and dust escaped the swirling vortex and formed rocky asteroids and icy comets, many of which still follow their ancient paths around the sun. By far, the biggest and most dominant planet in the solar system is Jupiter. Once it formed, its restless motion and relentless gravity brought chaos to the other developing planets. Small, embryonic worlds known as planetesimals were violently hurled by Jupiter through the crowded solar nebula. At least two planetesimals struck the giant planet Uranus, tipping it sideways. The primordial planet Theia, named for a mythical Greek titan, was set on a collision course toward the newly formed Earth. Our home world barely survived this big whack. However, the smash-up totally destroyed Theia, its shattered remains giving birth to our moon. Violent collisions like these filled the solar system with countless shards of flying rock that bombarded the surfaces of planets and their moons. None were left unscathed. Mercury and the moon still bear the marks of their wounds. Their airless, pockmarked surfaces have remained virtually unchanged for billions of years a stark reminder of a tumultuous, distant time. The red planet Mars also suffered heavy damage. Named for the mythological Roman god of war, Mars became a casualty of an epic attack from space. A prehistoric volley of mountainous rocks transformed its barren surface into a battleground. War had been waged on the god of war. The gas giant planets swallowed the incoming debris deep into their atmospheres. 
The only traces of cosmic impacts in this part of the solar system are recorded on the bleak surfaces of their many moons, like Jupiter's two largest satellites, Ganymede and Callisto. 600 million kilometers beyond Jupiter looms Saturn, the second largest planet in our solar system. This titanic world is surrounded by more than 60 battered moons. Among them is Tethys, whose frosty surface preserves its myriad craters. Although this mid-sized moon is made primarily of ice, it was bulky enough to survive the ancient barrage. Tiny Mimas, one of Saturn's smaller moons, was nearly demolished by the powerful impact. The vast crater from this blow earned it the name of the Death Star. Miranda, a satellite of Uranus, was literally blown to bits by a devastating collision. Over time, gravity slowly reassembled this wreckage into the patchwork moon we now know. Today, the solar system remains sparsely littered with bits of rubble that occasionally strike a moon or a planet. The prehistoric explosion at Canyon Diablo, which formed Meteor Crater, was the result of one such fragment. It has happened to everyone at one time or another. You just glance up at the stars and without warning, a brilliant streak of light crosses the sky. Some people call it a shooting star, but it has little to do with the stars. This dazzling, momentary flash is a meteor. On an average night, you might see one or two meteors each hour. Meteors are caused by tiny pebbles of space debris, known as meteoroids, most of which are smaller than grains of sand. Each ends its existence as a brilliant streak of light plunging through the upper atmosphere at 90 times the speed of sound. At such speeds, friction with the air heats the particles to temperatures approaching 11,000 degrees, vaporizing them in a flash of light lasting a mere fraction of a second. As the Earth goes around the Sun, it travels nearly a billion kilometers each year at an average speed of 106,000 kilometers per hour. Because the Earth is so big and it travels so far, it encounters as much as 50 tons of cosmic debris each day. Large numbers of meteoroids are trapped within the nuclei of comets dirty icebergs of frozen water, carbon dioxide, methane, and ammonia. The nucleus of a typical comet spends most of its time in the icy depths of the outer solar system. As the nucleus approaches the sun, its frozen surface is vaporized, and some of the dusty meteoroids escape into space. A long glowing stream of gas and dust flows away from the nucleus, forming a tail. Each time the comet passes near the sun, it leaves part of itself behind. Eventually, after many trips around the sun, when the nucleus has completely eroded away, all that remains is a river of dust which continues to flow along the original comet's path. Whenever the Earth crosses one of these rivers, it intercepts countless tiny meteoroids, and the sky is suddenly flooded with falling stars, a meteor shower. The richest and most reliable meteor display is the Perseid shower in the constellation Perseus. This shower is most active in the pre-dawn hours around August 12th each year producing as many as 100 meteors an hour. The Perseid meteor shower owes its existence to the torrent of dust left behind by Comet Swift-Tuttle. Meteor showers occur at predictable times throughout the year, and each is set in its own part of the sky. They faithfully return year after year 
as Earth carries us through these dusty streams. Radiating from the constellation Leo the Lion, the Leonids represent the most irregular of the annual meteor showers, peaking around November 17th each year. You can usually expect to see only a few dozen Leonids in an entire night. However, the shower bursts into a celestial fireworks display once every 33 years. 3,000 meteors an hour rained down in 1999. In 1966, as many as 10,000 meteors split the sky in a single hour. With all these meteors streaking across the sky, you may wonder if any of them ever reached the ground. The answer is usually no. Most meteoroids are made of light materials and vaporize high in the Earth's atmosphere. If captured in space and brought to Earth, they would float in water. A meteoroid that survives the fall to Earth is called a meteorite, and if it is large enough, it will carve out a crater upon impact. The surface of the Earth is scarred with many such formations. Almost 200 have been identified all over the world. Meteor Crater in Arizona is a well-known example, but it is very small compared to others. Larger structures include the Manicougan and Clearwater Craters in Quebec, Canada. The largest known crater on Earth is the Fort Crater in South Africa. Measuring 300 kilometers across, this feature is about 2 billion years old. All of these blemishes were created by collisions of cataclysmic proportions. While large incidents like these are extremely rare, Earth is constantly pelted by a hail of smaller objects. On August 10, 1972, a meteor skimmed through the upper atmosphere above Wyoming's Grand Teton National Park. Blazing a fiery path through the sky, a meteorite the size of a bowling ball smashed through a car in Peekskill, New York in 1992. And in 2008, hundreds of stony fragments showered down on the Sudanese desert after an 80-ton object exploded high overhead. On the morning of February 15, 2013, a meteoroid as massive as a naval destroyer entered Earth's atmosphere at 18 kilometers per second. Shining as bright as the midday sun, it streaked through the sky above the Russian city of Shelyabinsk. Seconds later, the 17-meter-wide object exploded 25 kilometers above the ground, releasing the energy of an atomic bomb, damaging thousands of buildings at a cost of millions of dollars. In just a few seconds, over a thousand people were injured, most by flying glass from shattered windows. A steady rain of interplanetary debris is the legacy of our solar system's formation. Fortunately, Earth's atmosphere shields us from most of it. Yet our protective blanket of air can do very little to protect us from something really big. Few celestial events instill as much wonder or fear as the sudden appearance of a bright comet in the night sky. For centuries, comets were thought to be evil omens preceding famine, disease, or death. Although we now understand their true nature, the unpredictable appearance of a new comet is still an ominous sight. In the autumn of 1965, a new comet appeared, diving steeply towards the sun. Named for the Japanese astronomers who discovered it, Comet Ikea Seki rapidly brightened from a faint telescopic object to one of the most brilliant comets of the last thousand years. It was visible in broad daylight as it raced past the blazing surface of the sun. Its nucleus, shredded to pieces by the sun's gravity, sped quickly back into the depths of space. Comet Hale-Bopp known as the Great Comet of 1997, 
became brighter than any star in the sky. It set a record among all comets by remaining visible to the naked eye observer for over 18 months. In 2007, Comet McNaught treated Southern Hemisphere observers to a spectacle even more brilliant than Hale-Bopp. McNaught was the brightest comet in over 40 years. It too was visible during the daytime and sported a magnificent tail that stretched halfway across the sky. Perhaps the most famous of them all is Comet Halley. Depicted in historical writings, tapestries, and famous works of art, this repeat celestial visitor has figured prominently throughout the ages. It was the first comet ever predicted to return. Its next encounter with Earth will be in 2061. Although they are beautiful, comets are potentially dangerous things. On the night of March 24, 1993, Carolyn and Eugene Shoemaker were scanning the skies above Palomar Observatory, searching for large asteroids. With them that night was David Levy. Over the years, this trio had already found dozens of comets and asteroids, but that night, they made a discovery that eclipsed all of their previous finds. What they found that night was a comet later named Shoemaker-Levy 9 in their honor. At first, it didn't seem to be important at all. However, astronomers soon realized that this object was unique. Every other comet orbits the Sun, but comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 was orbiting Jupiter. Once it was captured by the Jovian planet's powerful gravity, the comet was destined for destruction. A year before the discovery, the comet had passed very close to Jupiter, where immense tidal forces tore the nucleus apart, leaving a trail of debris. Astronomers who were studying the motion of the fragmented comet then made an even more astonishing discovery. The trail of rubble was on course to smash into Jupiter in July of 1994. Since the largest fragment was only two kilometers wide, many astronomers doubted whether it would produce any visible effect on the giant planet. Still, news that a comet would soon strike Jupiter generated tremendous excitement. Never before had anyone witnessed a collision like this. The world eagerly watched as the day of the first impact approached. On July 16, 1994, the first fragment plowed through Jupiter's clouds. Halfway across the solar system, observers on Earth watched as a colossal fireball over 3,000 kilometers high mushroomed above the impact site. Over the next five days, the trailing fragments crashed into Jupiter. The biggest struck the planet on July 18th unleashing a burst of energy 600 times more powerful than the world's entire nuclear arsenal. This impact created a monstrous black cloud as big as the Earth. The dark scars from these impacts were visible for months. Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 was a relatively small object Yet its effect on Jupiter was remarkable. What might have happened if this small comet had struck Earth instead of Jupiter? On the morning of June 30th, 1908, something did strike the Earth, exploding near the Tunguska River in Siberia. Witnesses reported that just after seven o'clock in the morning, an immense fireball rocketed across the sky, trailed by a thick plume of smoke. A few minutes later, a brilliant flash of light was followed by a sound like artillery fire. A shock wave knocked people to the ground and broke windows hundreds of kilometers away. Seismic stations detected it nearly a quarter of the way around the globe. 
The air glowed for weeks over Russia and Europe, and dust lingered in the upper atmosphere for months. The Tunguska region is so remote that it was almost 20 years before an expedition was organized to photograph and study the site. Upon arriving, the explorers found that a forest the size of a large city had been leveled by the blast. Yet mysteriously, there was no crater, and only a few traces of meteorites were ever found. The absence of a crater amidst such widespread devastation was puzzling at first. However, most scientists now agree that the Tunguska event was the result of a high-altitude airburst of a small comet. Comet nuclei are fragile heaps of loosely bound ice and dirt. The tremendous forces encountered by such a fast-moving object slamming into the Earth's atmosphere could cause it to explode in mid-air. The Tunguska event of 1908 was incredibly destructive. It was the most powerful impact in recorded history. The space between Mars and Jupiter is filled with countless chunks of rock and metal which make up the asteroid belt. These chunks range in size from a few centimeters to hundreds of kilometers wide. At least a million of them are more than a kilometer in diameter. While most asteroids are confined to the asteroid belt, some follow paths that cross the orbit of the Earth. Astronomers watch these objects closely, grouping them according to their hazard potential. A comprehensive, systematic search for near-Earth objects began in 1998. These so-called NEOs include comets, meteoroids, and asteroids that periodically approach the Earth and pose a significant threat of impact. The Catalina Sky Survey in Arizona together with observing programs like the Sighting Spring Survey in Australia, carry out nightly searches for these potentially threatening objects. One of the early successes of these sky surveys was the discovery of the asteroid Apophis in 2004. Named for the Egyptian god of darkness, Apophis weighs six times more than the Great Pyramid of Giza. Early predictions had it on a collision course with Earth in the year 2036, an impact that would have been much more damaging than the Tunguska event of 1908. However, after more careful observations, we now know that although Apophis will pass extraordinarily close to the Earth, the chance of a collision is near zero. Apophis is a stark reminder of all the threats that remain unseen. Its recent discovery and destructive potential highlight the urgency of these sky surveys. Luckily, Apophis will miss Earth. But every year or so, an NEO the size of a city bus plunges through the Earth's atmosphere. Fortunately, objects this small produce little or no damage. Once every thousand years, a Tunguska-class object strikes the Earth and causes regional destruction. Even rarer are mountain-sized impactors capable of causing global devastation. A direct hit by one of these is a truly frightening prospect. Yet such catastrophes have occurred in Earth's past. For over 150 million years, life on Earth was dominated by the dinosaurs. Then, 65 million years ago, in the twinkling of a geologic eye, all of the dinosaurs mysteriously vanished. They perished in a mass extinction that abruptly wiped out three-fourths of all species. Known simply as the KT extinction, its cause remained a mystery for decades. In 1980, 
Luis and Walter Alvarez proposed that this sudden extinction was caused by an equally sudden event, the impact of a large asteroid. They based their theory on the discovery of large amounts of iridium in a geologic formation known as the KT layer. Iridium is ordinarily very rare on Earth, yet is abundant in asteroids and comets. The researchers interpreted its presence in this layer as evidence for an extraterrestrial event. The Alvarez team quickly estimated that a 10-kilometer-wide asteroid would have contained enough iridium to fill this clay layer. If an asteroid that big had struck the Earth, it would have triggered a mass extinction. It would also have left a crater many kilometers across. Yet no such crater had ever been found. In 1978, geophysicists detected a huge semicircular rock formation on the seafloor just off the northern shore of the Yucatan Peninsula. A similar feature was soon found on the northern edge of the peninsula itself. The researchers realized that the two arcs traced out a circle, the eroded remains of a huge crater, nearly 200 kilometers across. A study of the rocks proved that it was a 65 million year old impact crater, just the right age to account for the dinosaur's extinction. This then is the location where many scientists think an ancient Armageddon took place. Near the center of the crater is the village whose Mayan name means the Tale of the Devil. On a fateful day at the end of the Cretaceous period, a devil came from the sky bearing lightning and thunder. It was a monstrous asteroid the size of Mount Everest, and it raced toward Earth at breathtaking speed, striking what is now the Gulf of Mexico. The force of the impact was more than a million times stronger than the Tunguska detonation. Unhindered by the Earth's atmosphere, the asteroid exploded with unimaginable fury. Millions of tons of rock were blasted into the atmosphere. A lethal cloud of ash enveloped the region. Clouds of soot shrouded the earth, blocking the life-giving warmth of the sun. The resulting global ice age killed most forms of life on earth, including the dinosaurs. Millions of years passed before life flourished once again. Yet it was not the same as before. The reptiles had been dethroned as the dominant life forms in the air, on the land, and in the seas. The balance of power had shifted, and the mammals were the new masters of the planet. The cataclysm had forever changed the face of the Earth. Comets and meteoroids are often depicted as cosmic villains, feared for their destructive power. As a group, they are dismissively called debris, yet they've played a crucial role in shaping the worlds of the solar system. In fact, they may well be the unsung heroes of interplanetary space. Four and a half billion years ago, the newborn Earth was a dry and barren world. Today, almost three quarters of its surface is covered by water. Scientists suspect that comets are the source of all this water. Every comet contains large amounts of water ice. When ancient comets bombarded the Earth, they released the life-giving water that makes up our oceans and rivers. The very water that flows through our bodies once 
came from the sky. During the infancy of the solar system, Earth was showered with more than just rocks and water. Amino acids, the building blocks of DNA, and all living things have been discovered in both meteorites and comets. As they pelted the Earth with dust, rocks, and water, they may have also delivered the raw materials necessary for the origin of life. Meteors, whether brilliant or faint, are the messengers of space. And when they fall to Earth, they are our only physical contact with the universe beyond the Earth-Moon system. Remember that they are ancient space travelers, and in their millions of passes through our solar system, they have seen the sun, the planets, and life itself evolve. If rock and dust could speak, what tales these meteors would tell, only to die unnoticed in a half second of light. So the next time you see a falling star, make a wish and mourn its demise.